Hey viewers, welcome back to Andy's Garage. Hey, today I was working out in the garage today, getting some stuff cleaned up, some tools put up, messing around with some new tools I bought. I may or may not do a video on, but who knows? Who knows what the future's gonna bring me? Anyway, uh, today I decided I'm gonna go ahead and get my yard equipment winterized. Uh, we had a pretty big windstorm yesterday and it finally knocked all the leaves out of the trees. So I was able to go out in the yard, get them mulched up. Uh, blow the leaves out of the ditch, get them mulched up, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, anyway, got my riding mower, got the push mower, the leaf blower, the weed eaters. Uh, my son has a 46 inch cub. We did his mower just a little bit ago. And I, obviously, I didn't video before that. But anyway, uh, I thought, well, I'll make a video on this and I'm going to take you with me. For starters, I'm going to put a little bit of fuel stabilizer in there. I don't need much because I don't have a whole lot of fuel in here. I probably, man, maybe, I don't know, half gallon maybe worth of gas in there. I always start off putting a fuel stabilizer in there. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, bogging oil out. But I'm going to go ahead and bring this puppy outside before I do that because as many of you know that fog oil makes a pretty big smoke screen. Uh, for those of you wondering, this is a Kohler 24 horse that I've got in this thing. It's 54 inch and got it like two years ago and it's been a, been a pretty good mower. Uh, one thing I really don't like about it is I'm not a big fan of the electronic PTO because it's be pretty sensitive sometimes. Uh, but I did figure out a way around that and maybe I'll uh, include that in on this video here uh, it's one of those safety bypass things that you do at your own risk you didn't hear that from me <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna get this thing outside and uh, we'll get some fogging oil in her hey viewers uh, let's start off taking off the air cleaner and as I said earlier this is the Kohler 24 horse for those who are wondering anyways took the air cleaner cover off took the air filter out and then just similar to my bolt video I'm gonna shoot some fogging oil in her just give her some short spurts till she starts puffing out white smoke and once she does I'll give her the beans and spray her in there until she dies out so uh, let's Get her started. Now that I smoked up the whole block here, there's a nice cloud of white smoke going all the way down the road here. All right, put the air cleaner back on, the cover back on, and uh, that's it for now. She's done till summertime, and then uh, we'll get the oil changed in her, get the blade sharpened up. Obviously, check things like air pressure and deck height and all that good jazzy stuff so uh, anyway uh all right now we're going to move on to the uh leaf blower the riding mower and the uh weed eater we'll be right back hey all right we're gonna get started on the uh push mower here again just a little bit of fuel stabilizer in there Don't need a whole lot because again, it's like my riding mower. She doesn't have a whole lot of fuel left in her. Uh, then we're gonna do the same thing with the weed eater. Hopefully, I don't have too much trouble starting these things. 
because it's been over a month since we last ran them. So as our mowing season ended, and just we were just pretty much waiting for the leaves to fall off the tree to finish, and that finally happened yesterday. For what little mowing I did, I probably could have, you know, at least put the fuel stabilizer in there and we'd have been okay, but I figured I may as well just do it all at the same time. All right, fuel stabilizer's in there. We're going to take this stuff outside and throw in the uh, fogging oil. Alright, we're gonna start by moving the air cleaner off the push mower. Definitely need a new air filter next next spring. That's pretty nasty looking. Uh, what's nice on this Troy built is you don't have to choke this puppy. She just starts right on up without having to be choked. Now hopefully this sucker will fire up for me. to get started because it's been probably over a month since we last used them. Alright. Oh I need to go get me a torque spit for this. So uh we'll run the garage real quick and I'll be right back. Alright back. Got me a Torx T handle here. Go ahead and take this cover off. He's dirty too. Alright. Now hopefully this sucker starts up. Like I say, it's been I know it's been over a month since we did any last mowing. So but anyway, let's see what happens. Take. All right. She wasn't wanting to run very well. I don't know why. Let's 
we'll figure that out in the spring. Alright viewers, we're gonna go ahead and do this leap. Hopefully it won't be too hard to start it. I hit her running a little bit ago. <laughs> Hey viewers, now that I'm back in the comforts of my heated garage here, hey, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that video on uh, what I was talking about earlier with the uh, mowing decks getting cut off really easy and all that. And uh, there's also a nice way to bypass that backup switch on these mowing decks. Push the stupid button before you can even mow in reverse because it kills your deck. And uh, this switch here is what activates the safety on that when you put it in reverse to kill your mower. And I'll show you where this is at. You don't have to remove it, uh, you can simply unplug it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this apart, show you where it's at. It's, underneath the battery compartment here and uh, so anyway, like I said I'm going to show you this and then I'm going to show you a little trick you can do on these new uh, designs for the seat safety switch which I absolutely hate because even a 250 pound guy like me a lot of times that switch would get activated uh, you know and smaller people like my son you know he weighs I don't know he weighs probably 120 pounds if even that uh, barely weighs enough to be able to donate blood anyway and it would always it would always end up killing the deck on him and uh but what's nice though is on the mowers that have the handle to activate the deck it's not near as bad of an issue but on mowers like mine that have the, the electric pto the minute that seat switch is activated, boom, kills the deck instantly. And you got to push the button in to reset it and pull it back out. Uh, so if you have a electric PTO, this video is really going to be helpful because, uh, you know, it's going to kill that deck instantly. Like I said, I got a little bit of a trick. You know, again, it's one of those things, you know, get your own wrist. There's uh, something happens, this thing runs you over and runs over your face, makes you look like Freddy Krueger, that's on you. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, battery pulled out of here, and uh, I'll show you exactly uh, what I do. All right, for starters, we're going to get this battery out of here. Uh, for those of you who may be new to working on your own stuff or anything like that, uh, whenever it comes to batteries, you always want to disconnect the uh, negative battery terminal first because you don't want to be because you want to isolate you, you want to get rid of it you want to isolate that ground because uh, you don't want to be working on this and you uh, working on that positive terminal and you end up touching something metal and you know battery blows in your face or you end up causing the battery to leak somehow or uh, or more commonly happening is you end up welding a wrench or something to that piece of metal you just touched with it. So, and uh, you never want to go off, you never want to base negative and positive off the colors of the wires because I've seen uh, reds on negatives and 
blacks on positives before. I've seen all sorts of different colors, greens and blue wires. And you always want to look at the battery and uh, to see what the terminal markings are for that. You never want to go off the wire color. All right. So I am going to go get a screwdriver real quick to pull this bracket out and bring it back. All right. All right. Now we got that out. Pull this battery. All right. Let me go get a light here real quick. All right. Stay. You stay. Be good light. You stay. All right. I'll take you off this mount here and show you what I'm talking about. All right. <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to take the whole switch out. Uh, but this is what it is here. So and this is what when you put your mower in reverse... This is that safety switch that kills the deck unless you push that there. So this will bypass it. You can take the whole thing out if you want, it doesn't matter. But if you look down here, what I just did on this particular one is just disconnected the harness at this connection here. Oh, I'm getting blurry on you, there you go. From this to this, you just disconnect it and it'll take care of your problem with the uh, mower wanting to die. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna put the camera down for just a moment here and, uh, oh, one last thing. You don't wanna disconnect. Here, let me see if I can do this here or not. You don't want to disconnect this harness from the switch. Because I don't know if you can see in there or not. Let me see. But right up here, these terminals are spring loaded. So even if you just disconnect the switch with these spring loaded terminals, it's still going to require you to push that button. It's just the way that it's designed for the manufacturer. So, uh, but because if you look, the two, I said it's kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can see the springs making contact on those terminals there and that's what shorten that out causing your mower to you know die on you when you put it in reverse unless you push that switch so uh, you just can't just disconnect the switch so uh, you either just unplug it from the harness you can, like I said you can take the whole switch out like you know I did on the one uh, on someone else's mower or you can just disconnect that harness like I did on this one here. But anyway, I'm going to get started on uh, showing you what I did on this uh, seat safety switch in order to, it's not going to completely, like I said, on these electric PTO ones, it's not going to completely alleviate your problem with it killing the deck completely, but it will make a huge difference. So anyway, I'm going to put this camera back up on the mount and uh, I'll show you what I did. I'll be right back. All right, folks, what you're going to want to do is disconnect this wire harness from this safety switch. Um, it's got a little bolt on here to keep the seat from falling too forward and falling off. Just going to use a crescent wrench to get it off. And it's not on very tight. Pull this bolt out. A little long, longer than what I would think it needs to be. So all it does is just keeps the seat when it falls forward. It hits down here and keeps it from going all the way forward. Now to take the seat off, careful. Underneath this adjuster is a spring, and I'll show you here in a second. Right here, 
you don't want to lose that spring. So as you take the seat off, you want to keep pressure on it. That spring will shoot across your garage and oh, end up cussing up a storm and have to say 15,000 Hail Marys or whatever to uh, be forgiven. Anyway, so got the seat off. <clears throat> and what I have done is Out here, using the cricket. There you go. What you want to do is this is that switch. Okay, so what you can do is uh, <clears throat> I just knocked it down so I can't show you it because I knocked mine down here. Uh, what you can do is get a handful of washers, you know, smaller than the diameter of the switch. And uh, you can just tape them down to the bottom of the seat here. Because what you want to do is you're just basically what you're doing is there's a little bit of a, an air gap between the bottom of the seat and the switch. Now what you want to do is you want to put just enough on there to where when the you're off the mower seat the switch pops up but then as soon as you barely put any pressure on the seat you want to you want to activate the switch here because the minute this switch pops up it's going to kill your deck so what you basically like I said what all you're doing is you're closing that gap because there is a bit of a gap in between the bottom of the seat inside here and the top of the switch. So, you know, you can, if you, I can't remember how many washers I put on there. It was like, it wasn't a whole lot. It was only like, you know, maybe three, I think at the most. But I said it was just enough to close that air gap. So when you're bouncing around on that mower, you're not doing this. So, cause that's what ends up killing your deck. So anyway, I ended up knocking mine out. I guess tape was loose or whatever. So. I'm going to go ahead and fix this and, uh, you know, I'll experiment right along with you. So, all right, I'm going to go find some washers and uh, I'll be right back. All righty, I'm back. I just got three quarter inch washers on the, some duct tape here. And you'll see a witness mark where the top of that switch has been hitting the bottom of the seat. Then you'll just want to kind of force them in there. All right, where that witness mark is. And this is where screwdriver comes in handy. Kind of help push that tape in there. I'm just using, oh, I think I just lost one of those washers in there. All right, we'll see if two will be enough to Keep that switch from activating. Take that screwdriver, obviously without cutting the tape, use it to kind of smooth that tape out, make sure it's down in there. So, yeah, I lost that washer down in there. All right, I'm gonna grab my switch. Switch back in there, and then what I do is I kind of push on that seat, see it still has, still has some movement to it, so I'm going to have to go get well, starters, take this tape off, so two not enough so definitely gonna have to have three my goodness man I rubbed that tape on good all right I'm gonna pause this for a minute I peel this tape off and go get another washer and I'll be right back all right viewers hey 
I lied a minute ago. I said I thought I had lost one of the uh, washers. I didn't. There were three of them in there. So I added a fourth one. And this time, just to make sure I don't lose them, I just put a small piece of painter's tape on the washers to keep from losing them. So, all right, so I'm going to shove that back in there like I did a minute ago. I don't know what that clinking noise was. It sure sounded like something fell. That's why I was like, oh, man, I washed it. Lost the washer. There we go. Knock that tape down. Yeah, nice and smooth out. All right. Switch back in. Make sure you put it in the right way. You want to, uh, you put the switch back in. So, like, if this is the seat here, as it's sitting in your mower, you want to make sure your terminals are facing towards the front part of that seat. All right, let's get back in there and kind of. Listen for it, barely push. So I was barely pushing, and I hear it. So we will go ahead and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it there with uh, four washers. I mean, I want it sensitive, but I don't want it, you know, uh, to the point where it doesn't activate. Because, like I said, because you know, I've got a pretty steep ditch I gotta mow every week and uh sure it would be nice if this thing decided to do something stupid, you know, that it uh kills the deck. So like I said, so my face doesn't end up looking like Freddy Krueger. Alright. Well this always kinda sucks here trying to make sure you get that in the right place. Alright, once you get that spring back in there, put your seat back down, right to the front to get it in the glides, there you go, now you ain't going to worry about the spring, ba flying across the shop, so you're not cussing up a storm, alright, put that bolt back in there, alright, Pull the seat forward a little bit back here a little bit. Right. Then reconnect the wire harness. And folks, it's just that simple. And like I said, it, it doesn't kill your safety switch. Your safety is still there if you were to completely fall off the mower. But what it does is it just makes it a little bit less sensitive. So just the slightest little bump, because on this thing where my Sun uses it. Slightest little bump. Boom. Kills the deck. Then you got to stop. Push the button back in. Pull it out. Back up a little bit. Because, you know, you're going to be rolling a little bit, you know, as the deck dies. So you got to back up and get what you missed. So, but that helps out quite a bit. Like I said, it's not perfect. I know a lot of people, they just disconnect that switch and they uh, uh, jump those wires. You know. Like I said, if it weren't for me having to uh, mow the ditch and worry about this sucker rolling over, you know, I'd probably do something different. I'm not going to say what I would do, uh, but uh, this is what I do. Uh, like I said, this is something you're going to do, you know, you do on your own risk. I'm just giving you this information on, you know, uh, you know, things that are out there. So anyway, uh, if this video was helpful, you know, give me a thumbs up. Hey, man, I appreciate it. You know, subscribe. And as always, I appreciate you. And hey, thanks for watching.